Atari, a giant company that collapsed under its own weight, and the Microsoft Xbox 360, which was loved by almost everyone during the generation, but mostly just to play Halo and a few other games. But what happens when we put them head to head? I am the Game Collector, and this is Second Opinion Games, and today I put Atari versus the Xbox 360. Second Opinion Games First up, Time Pilot, and over on the Atari 2600, the graphics are kind of constrained, and of course the Atari 2600 came out in 1977, so yeah, it was gonna look bad. It wasn't a graphical powerhouse at the time, and trying to do a simple thing like Time Pilot seems like it was completely out of the question. All of the aircraft that you take down here all act pretty much the same. And when you make that massive jump and leap in time, it doesn't look very impressive at all. On the Xbox 360, you play in a much smaller window, and sure, it keeps it more realistic to what the arcade version of Time Pilot was. You also have all the extra achievements that you could rack in here, but the most important factor of all is that it actually plays like Time Pilot. It's not flickering all over the place, your bullets go through the entire length of the screen, and you could always fly and avoid missiles that are fired at you through the helicopter stage, which is my favorite part of the entire game, and I really appreciate this version. I gotta give it to the Xbox 360, they won with this one. Which seems like a no-brainer with older consoles fighting against the big boy 360. Joust on the Xbox is another very capable arcade conversion of the classic, and you could play on Xbox Live. The first three months I owned my Xbox 360, I played exactly two games. I played Halo 2, which is an original Xbox game, and of course, I played Joust. I was super psyched, waiting for my opponent to join me online, and then I got into waiting rooms where I would wait up to four or five hours before someone finally got a chance to play me, and then quickly quit, and then I would have to wait hours longer. This became very frustrating, and the gameplay itself really isn't that good. At least not compared to the Atari 2600 version that feels like a breeze to control. Even with the Atari stupid joystick that they had, it still controls absolutely just fine, and if you plug in a Sega Genesis controller, it plays even better. Better. Sure, the physics aren't all quite here, but it's still a very fun version of Joust. Probably the most fun version. Heck, I even rather play the Atari 7800 version of the game, which keeps all of the great physics going along with the eggs flying all about, and it's quite difficult as well. Either way you look at it, Joust is a great game, but the Atari clearly has the upper edge. And that fire dragon bird thing that comes out of nowhere will still still give me nightmares to this very day, even if it is all 8-bit and below goodness. Frogger on the Atari 2600 was one of the best looking games I ever played the very first time I played it. Granted, I was like three at the time, but I was still in a maze trying to move this little frog across the street, and I barely had to use my imagination to play the game at all. Remember at the time, most of the games, you barely made out what anything was. Here you have a giant frog and cars the size of the giant frog, and you could easily get splatted all over the highway. The gameplay itself is terrific, and as for music, well, it's there in the very beginning of the game, but you most play in silence. On the Xbox 360, it's very much how you remember the arcade version. Again, the play window is much smaller, but I find it really easy to get my frogs to where they need to go, even with all of the extra traffic and all the extra hazards in the water section of the game. I absolutely love this version, but which one's better? Well, the Xbox 360 version, for one ginormous reason. See, on the Atari 2600, trying to get your frog in that very first hole is nearly impossible. I've only managed to do it a small handful of times, and I've played this game a lot over the years. Here, I finally get it just to clear another level, or at least the very first level, which as a kid, I could never seem to do. On the Xbox 360, it feels easy, natural, and it's just a very fun time to play. 
Dig Dug! The Xbox has a reimagined arcade conversion here, and I found it to be excruciatingly difficult. This is nearly unplayable. How fast the enemies run to the surface, giving you almost no time to take them out, is frustrating. I tried to play this game on the Atari 7800, and I found that it's again just terrible. It's hard to play, and I just continuously die. Man, do I ever hate Dig Dug, even though when I play in the arcade, I do fairly well. On both these versions, I completely suck. At least until I came to the Atari 2600 version, which might look like crap, but it's very playable. It's actually enjoyable. Finally, I could really get into Dig Dug, and I could say I really dig the 2600 version. Asteroids, the Atari 7800 has one of my favorite versions of the game. One of the things I like about the most is how round the asteroids are, and you could actually see them turning in a nice 8-bit style. The gameplay itself is smooth as possibly can be, and it's a lot of fun to play from start to finish. Of course, it's one of those high-score games, so you're never going to really see some giant enemy at the end of the game. On the Xbox 360, you'll find that they gave it personality and a weird sense of massive flashing explosions that nearly gives you epilepsy and also a continuous thumping beat that ranks your anxiety level through the roof. Playing each of these games, you cannot go wrong, but the edge just goes to the Xbox 360 because it really breathes new life into an old concept. Even though one of my favorite asteroids related things to do is stare at the Atari 2600 box art. Centipede and Millipede. If you're playing on the Xbox 360, sure you can play the arcade version of the games, but of course you want to play the updated Xbox versions. And you'll find that they play, well, kind of crappy. The Xbox controller itself isn't really good with these controls. The sound effects though are not offensive to the ears, unlike some of the other versions of the game that I have played. And the difference between Centipede and Millipede, well, there's really not that much, other than Millipede seems to be quite a bit better with a lot more enemies and cool explosions all around. Playing this game on the Atari 5200, you'll see that it looks quite ugly and Centipede itself plays terribly. Millipede plays quite a bit better, the graphics are cleaned up a bit more and there are a ton of enemies on screen. Now I would say the Xbox runs away with a clean victory here, except for the fact that the 5200 has a trackball controller which makes the game far better to play. So if you're going to play Centipede or Millipede, definitely break out that trackball and play it on the 5200. Defender, on the Xbox 360, the game looks really good. However, it plays unbelievably bad. The controls just were not set up properly to pull off this game. Everything feels stiff and you barely feel like you're in any control of your ship whatsoever, which is not something you want in a video game. On the Atari 2600, sure, it looks like total garbage, and I can never figure out how to use my bombs, even though someone told me in the comments down below a while back, I think you have to fiddle with the switches on the 2600 to do it, but you know what? Fiddling with those switches while you're playing the game feels like you're trying to defuse a bomb. I am not touching that thing once it's turned on and I am playing. However, I still manage to clear lots of levels. And here's the crazy thing. This isn't even the best version of Defender that I could be playing on an Atari system. I could have broke out my Atari Jaguar and played it on that because it has an arcade version on it that is freaking beautiful and plays terrific. The fact that the 2600 pulls off a victory over the Xbox 360 here is a total miracle. And it happens to be one of my favorite games for the console. Tempest, here's the arcade version, which is on the Xbox Live version of the game. Sure, it's great, it's Tempest, except for the fact that there's no spinner controller for the Xbox, so it plays kind of clunky. And then the updated version, I, I don't even know what I'm looking at here. Sure, it's updated graphically, sort of. I'd much rather be playing the original arcade version because this just feels unbelievably bland. Sure, it's Tempest, but it doesn't look or feel good. If you played the Atari Jaguar and played Tempest 2000, you'll find that that is a much better Tempest experience, even without the spinner controller. Of course, you could have 
have a modded controller with the spinner on it, and then it plays unbelievably well. And of course, there are other versions of Tempest on the same card, which are even better, like Tempest Plus. So if you were a huge fan of Tempest like I am, the very best version amongst every single Tempest game out there is on the Atari Jaguar. I know that it stinks that the system's kind of rare now, but if you want to play Tempest, well, then that's where you have to do it. Space Invaders for the 2600. This is the gold standard of arcade ports because it was probably the first time that you got to play a better version at home than in the arcade. First of all, it has color, which some of the arcade versions definitely did not have. It also has options that let you play in different ways, like make all of the enemies on screen absolutely invisible, which makes it really frustrating to try and play the game, but it's still a heck of a lot of fun. The Xbox has a massive hurdle to jump over if they're going to beat this game. Space Invaders Infinity Gene. It looks like an old school version of Space Invaders, and it plays clunky. Oh my god. Oh wait, what the fudge is going on? Well, the game just switched and now, oh my god, what is this? No, really, what is this? It just gets crazier as you start clearing levels. There's boss battles here. There's power-ups. And then later in the game, it even turns into a free-on shooter where you just maneuver your ship all around, blowing up all of the space invaders. This is barely space invaders at this point, but I absolutely love playing this game. And it might be my favorite version of space invaders ever. If it wasn't for the other Xbox 360 version of the game, Space Invaders Extreme, which is insanely well made. Now you actually have to pick and choose which Space Invaders to get. If you get four in a row, you can get a power up like a lasers, bombs, and other things like that, taking on massive bosses to upbeat music. And the game is just incredible from start to finish. This is how you reimagine Space Invaders for the current day and age, and they create a timeless classic that managed to outperform the timeless classic that they made before. Space Invaders, my friends, is not dead. If you play it on the 2600, you're going to have a great time. If you play it on the 360, you're going to have a great time. But you know what? You're going to have a better time on the 360 with both of these great games. Okay, the systems are neck and neck, but it all comes down to our final game. Choplifter on the Atari 7800 is definitely one of the better versions of Choplifter out there. The controls are a little clunky, but not as clunky as other versions, believe me. You pick up little men, you fly them back to your base, you drop them off, and you go pick up more little men. Don't be too greedy, though, because sometimes an airplane will come out of nowhere and just drop a bomb on you, killing everybody. So you're going to have to take your time, learn the mechanics of the game, and make sure you rescue every single person. Can you get a perfect score? I was never able to, but I still love this game. On the Xbox 360, sure, the graphics look like Dreamcast graphics, but I mean that in the very best possible way. If they were any prettier, I don't think I would like the game as much. If they were worse, well, it would just feel like it has no personality whatsoever. The controls are quite a bit better than any other version of the game, even though they still feel a little clunky trying to shoot enemies in the foreground, but you don't have to point to the background. So that's kind of cool. There's also extra missions here and more things to worry about, such as running out of fuel, which normally I hate, but I feel like they had to add that in the game in order to feel like there's more sense of urgency. You have a speed boost and you have a minigun. You also have lock-on missiles and you have lots of different guys to destroy with your cannons. You still have to worry about your people dying, so you have to make sure you get them back safely. And you also have to save a news reporter and his cameraman, even though I really don't want to. You know what? I'll do it for the points. Your helicopter pilot is always chattering about something, but it never gets annoying, and I'm only scratching the surface of what can be done in this game. Later, you'll pick up more aircraft with better weapons, and you could always land and kill a whole bunch of chickens and cows and everything else. There's a chop full of secrets in this game that I can't wait to find each and every single one of them. Not only is this the very best version of Choplifter out there, it's one of my favorite helicopter games of all times. So what's the final score? Did the Xbox 360 take it? or Atari and all of its consoles fall underneath it. Well, I'll say the winner is you, my friends, because you could enjoy all these games. But you know what? It was the Xbox 360. But of course, that's just my opinion.
Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video. I had a great time making it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm trying to grow the channel and it is moving at a snail pace. And if you think I misjudged any game on here, well then let me know in the comments down below. I cannot wait to read them and actually answer you unlike some of the other YouTubers out there. So until later, I will see you again, guys.